Harry Hurley has always considered being a broadcaster an absolute privilege, with a special bond between broadcaster and his audience. And what an audience that has been. Since 1992, Harry has logged more than 22,000 on-air hours of broadcasting. He's been chronicled as the mayor of the morning in South Jersey for more than two decades and has been ranked as the seventh best political journalist in the entire state. Great. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley, on being inducted into the Broadcast Pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. Very few people I've met in my career deserve it more. Um, Harry personifies South Jersey. He fights for it every day on his show. He listens to the people of South Jersey. He expresses their concerns. He gets great guests on the program. And he provides a huge public service on top of being really entertaining too. In 1979, he became the youngest full-time newspaper staff writer in America to earn a byline at the Atlantic City Press. Harry was only 19. He later went on to enjoy a 10-year career as a casino executive working for Donald Trump. From your time as a, as a journalist, through your time as a, a casino executive, uh, right through your time as a broadcaster uh, in New Jersey, you've really attained the top of your profession in every way. Everybody who knows you is really proud of you, and everybody who's been on your show has been treated with respect and has an opportunity to talk to the people in your listening area about the issues that are important. Harry lives in Egg Harbor Township with his wife Margie and they have three adult children and a grandson. I want to congratulate you, Harry, on the tremendous accomplishment of being the first person from South Jersey to be main, named to the Broadcast Pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. Congratulations again. Please welcome Harry Hurley into the Broadcast Pioneers Hall of Fame. It's a great night to be here. Aren't we lucky we do something that we love? People go to work every day and hate their job. Think about it. No one in this room that's in radio or TV ever goes to work and hates their job. We have passion, we have heart, we're better people for it. A very good friend of mine lives his life by the motto, the three Bs, and I think you'll be very happy about this. Be brief, be brilliant, be gone. <laughs> but I do have some people to thank tonight, and I would ask my beautiful wife of 32 years, so Vi, I know Vi went back to work, we got you by two years right now. Margie, if you would stand up. All I'm going to do tonight is talk about people that made it possible for me to be here, and that woman has made me such a better person than I ever would have been. I would ask my daughter, Kristen, I'll go in age to stand up. You're very young, but you are my oldest. Isn't she beautiful? And she made me a grandfather. Thank you, Kristen. I'd ask Lauren, my beautiful daughter, to step up. He goes by Rob, but his name is really Harry Robert Hurley Jr., and I'm so proud of him. He's very handsome, and he is available, ladies. My son-in-law, John Baker. My soon-to-be son-in-law, Andrew Skellinger. And my future son-in-law did it the right way. And I don't even know if Lauren knows this whole story, but Andrew asked to meet with my wife and I. And I just was so proud because he asked us for the privilege to marry Lauren. Your class act, Andrew. My brother Don, who when you said, sit down, Harry, that was really Don, <laughs> leaping up with the camera. My identical twin, he gets mixed up all the time, including tonight. If I do something, he gets blamed for it. If he does something, I get blamed for it. If you like me, you love him. If you don't like me, you hate him. It's, it's unbelievable. It's true, but I always warn people, he carried a gun, so it could be him, <laughs> retired policeman. I want to thank our chairman, Jerry Wilkinson. I want to thank our president, Jerry Klein, our committee person, chair, the great Pat Delcy. And Pat, it is great to see you here so healthy tonight. Let's hear it for Pat. 
I want to congratulate our phenomenal living legend person of the year, Tom Moran, who you will hear from and about in just a little bit. That's why we're really here. I have so many people that I want to thank and recognize, and I can't recognize everyone, but if you'll humor me, and I promise I'm not going to go on and on, and if I hear the piano start to play, I'll run. But I want to introduce my brother Jay, my sister Karen, my sister-in-law Mary Jane, my niece Katie, and her boyfriend Matt. And right here up front is my high school track, track coach, the handsome man, the silver fox, right there, 42 years athletic director of Atlantic City High School. He was my championship track coach, and he's just a great guy, and he's gonna retire after this school year, after 42 years, Frank Campo and his wife, Karen. Governor Christie's dad, and maybe you'll see that in the video package afterwards, Governor Christie did a very generous testimonial, and I just couldn't believe it when I saw it. I haven't seen the video package, but I did see what Governor Christie put together. He said to send his regards. His father, Bill, who has become a very good friend of mine, would have been here tonight. His wife has had an injury. She's going to be okay, but they couldn't be here. And if we could have all of the tables that we brought here from Atlantic City just stand up for just a quick minute and be heard. I want to just take a couple of minutes and recognize my employer because after all I have three children, a beautiful wife, a grandson, I have a lot of people counting on me and I want to stay employed for another quarter of a century. Town Square Media is in the house tonight. I'm going to introduce some of our executives that made the trip here with us tonight. We have a tremendous senior vice president for all of New Jersey and now all of Michigan, Greg Janoff, who a lot of you know. He is as class an individual as you will ever see in this industry. He supports us in every way. He allows us to dare to be different, to take prudent risks, to make a difference, not to mark time. And I can't begin to thank Greg for what he means to me, my career, and our stations. The best general manager in New Jersey, at least if not beyond, is Michael Rubel, and he's at the table. We go back two decades. He treats me with respect. I don't know how many of you have a boss that says, you know, am I doing enough for you? Are you happy? I want you to be happy. He cannot do enough, and it makes me want to do more. Thank you, Michael. Our general sales manager, who never says a nice word about me, even though I am a sales giant, never says a good word about me, but I think he likes me, Joe Mitchell. And my program director, and all of you in this business know, if you don't have a great working relationship with your program director, you're going nowhere. Chris Coleman, we launched a station that did not exist. There wasn't a single element other than me in the morning on the station. His work ethic is unbelievable. His support is just, I can't even verbalize it, Chris Coleman. Thank you, Chris. Together, we truly are delivering relevance, ratings, and revenue. I want to recognize the president of the New Jersey Broadcasters Association, who's here with us tonight, Paul Rotella. And you, you should really get to know Paul. I know we're in Philadelphia, and he's New Jersey president. He's one of the most dynamic and fierce advocates for our industry in the country from here, throughout the Delaware Valley, all the way to our nation's capital, and he's become a great friend. I do have to recognize one other person, Chuck Malamut. Chuck is my mentor. When I was a senior hotel executive, I wasn't one until him. I'm his protege. I'm so proud to have worked for him. He taught me how to manage a 1,000 people at one time and run a four-diamond and four-star hotel for Donald Trump, Chuck Malamut. And I have to thank my wife again because I was making a very handsome six-figure salary. And I said, honey, I like what I'm doing, but I love radio. Can I quit my job that feeds our three young children and provides for our family? And instead of doing what I like, can I do what I love? And Margie said, I trust you. I know you'll be able to provide for us. You will make it happen. And it has been an amazing almost quarter of a century. And it's the best decision I ever made 
because I would have been a stranger to my children. I was working six, seven days a week. I work hard still, boss. I don't want you to keep me. But it was the best decision I ever made. We are a close-knit family. And those of you in this business know, when you take on tough assignments and you dare to challenge power, awful things can happen. They happen directly, they happen indirectly, and my family has never complained about issues that I've taken on and how it impacts their lives. We are a close-knit family. I'm so grateful to have a career in broadcasting. Very few ever achieve it, and it's one that should never be taken for granted. To the entire broadcast pioneers, the Philadelphia family, thank you for tonight's honor. Good night.